Good afternoon, everybody. It's about uh, 12 p.m. down here in Cape Town, South Africa. A little bit of sun and fog out there, and let's uh, get this going. So I'll take everyone's questions and things for about 10 minutes or so in uh, in the live in the so what is this called again? The uh, cast thing um, in in a few minutes, and uh, yeah. So let's let's kick it off. I'm just going to switch over to my slides quickly. See if we can get this presentation running. Good afternoon, everybody. It's about 12 p.m. down here in Cape Town, South Africa. A little bit of sun and fog out there, and let's uh, get it going. Alrighty. So I've titled this one "Behind the Woo." So creating the ultimate business building toolkit. So what we're really trying to do is uh, just tell a bit of a story today. So when you, st when you tell a story, people say it's often good to start right at the end. So basically, this is our, our key goal, is to, to help people to build businesses and just to, to be successful online, essentially. Um, just a quick recap, so just how we all started. So I started with an email, essentially, at Woo. So these three young gentlemen just decided to take a bit of a leap of faith and um, and just to see what uh, what this fr new frontier kind of looked like, um, you know, whether it was, you know, themes or plugins. The main idea was really just to take a chance and just to explore something. And from three, we're at about 46 people now. Um, we're hiring as well, so I'll be mentioning that a few times during the presentation. Um, and yeah, so three to 46 is quite a journey, but we'll get back to that in a second. So a little bit about me. So who am I? So basically, I'm the product guy. So I'm in charge of a few things. I'm in charge of managing the engineering team at Woo, so that's managing our devs, um, also managing our product team. So we have a, a keen group of product managers who we've started up this year um, just to understand a little bit more about our customer, but more on that in a little while. Back to the, to the key topic of behind the Woo. So this is kind of like behind the music, but with Woo, essentially. And just to just to uh, mention about our goals again, so this is how we all started essentially. So it started with the idea of democratizing first class website design. So people go out there and they look for uh, you know, web design that is uh, really of a top class. You know, they, they want a top designer to actually build their website, but top designers come at a big price. So we decided to work with you know, professional designers like LHS Stocks, who's now running Typekit, and, um, and Tim Van Dam, who's worked at you know Facebook and Instagram and Goala and Dropbox, he's currently at Dropbox, you know, and get these people on board to to get them to design themes for WordPress, basically. Um, also giving them an extra channel to to sell their designs and, and market their skills, and you know, hopefully we could leverage their their channel and their influence to to help people to grow and be exposed to WordPress. And over time, you know, we, we were bundling in lots of, of functionality and, and all of that kind of thing uh, into the themes and just building out, uh, you know, tool after tool after tool to help our customers with, with building out WordPress websites. Um, this was being bundled into the, into the themes. So we were, you know, bundling in functionality directly into the themes, which in hindsight is not the best sort of move, but that's where we were at that point. And the biggest question we got was, we want shopping cart functionality. So we figured, all right, you know, why not? Uh, we could probably sell a few more themes by building some kind of e-commerce functionality, um, or as people called it, they called it the shopping cart functionality at the time. So, you know, that, that generally means dropping a product into a cart, but people don't often think beyond that. So, you know, people call it shopping cart functionality. So we said, okay, let's do this. And we had a bit of a journey, and uh, we explored a few options. I think we spent about a year and a half, maybe two years, exploring different different ways of doing this. I think we started WooCommerce probably about three or four different times. And uh, we ended up in September 2011 with WooCommerce as we know it now. And uh, yeah, like I said, it was quite a wild ride. Um, and all of a sudden, we started getting all these questions. You know. Uh, I'd like to run a drip campaign. Do you guys integrate with Stripe? Uh, what do you do about fulfillment? Um, you know, we need a CRM. What is table rate shipping? Um, all these really big and, and potent questions, and they had kind of nothing to do with uh, themes, really. Um, and that was the sort of kickstart of our of our real journey there. 
uh, with WooCommerce and, and trying to build a, a real end-to-end -end e-commerce solution on top of the platform that we, we know and love, which is WordPress, basically. And all the while sort of trying to, to have this goal of, of democratizing design. And we figured the, the goal isn't really where we're at at the moment, so that was basically our big pivot. Uh, and what we do day to day is essentially this, and we started, you know, building out a toolkit around that. So that's kind of a, a brief history of of where we've come from and, and where we're at at the moment. And the real sort of meat of, of what I'm trying to get through today is more a little bit about our future, you know, so a little bit of the Wucha, really, um, back to the Wucha. And this is just a little bit of a... a uh, sort of a recap of where we're at at the moment and where we're heading. Uh, just to explain a little bit about what maybe there's been a few moves that we've made this year which might seem a bit strange or might seem like they don't fit into the goal. So I'm hoping to kind of clarify all of that. So the first key element is just bridging the gap. And this is kind of a, a theme that I've, I've gone through over the last year or two of trying to basically bridge gaps between themes and e-commerce, which is our first uh, split, and between ultimately between customer needs and what we're doing. So build what your customers need when they need it, right? Um, this was the big, the big ticket for us, is really learning and listening to, um, to customers and understanding it. And, you know, whether we, people realize it or not, there seems to be this common trend. So even when we were doing uh, just theming, we would have uh, theme A would have testimonial functionality in it, for example, to display customer testimonials and things. And theme B would have the same, but it would be bundled actually into the, into the theme. So people switch between theme A and theme B, and maybe there's a custom field that they were missing or something in the theme that they had, and the theme would break. And they go, I'd lost, you know, let's say it was, um, you know, one of the themes maybe had a Twitter handle field and the other one didn't and they would lose that and they'd come and complain to us. So that's not a great customer experience and we're trying to bridge that gap and resolve that. So the initial sort of move that we made was splitting out all of the different features that we have into free plugins and you might think that's a bit strange but it was about giving access. So we didn't see sort of a, a revenue potential in, give, in taking a feature out of a paid for product and then charging for it. You know, we've already sort of sold that feature to the customer. So we figured, let's break it out. Let's, you know, give the, like one uh, testimonials plugin and one project plugin and one team management plugin, for example. And at the same time, try and make these products the best products they can be. You know, so testimonials, make sure that the testimonials are, are rendered correctly. If there's any kind of rich snippets we can use, do that. Uh, really just build out a piece of a toolkit. And that's kind of the starting point of where this whole toolkit idea came from. And trying to build out a set of tools that just every tool that you add makes everything else really better. So you choose a theme, and then if you need testimonials functionality, you load in the testimonials plugin, and the theme is already styled to work with the plugin. Everything just works seamlessly. You know, you can build up a feature set that you want for your website just by clicking a few buttons, and everything just works really well together. Uh, to the point where you could even say have a uh, projects portfolio display which then if you have the testimonials plugin active actually shows a testimonial per product or per project sorry and those kinds of things really are important because people trust what you're offering so we we try to build out that kind of a toolkit um, you know a hammer doesn't work without a nail for example and a nail is useless without a hammer so trying to build up pieces that complement one another <clears throat> and at the same time sticking to our, our grand goal. But right now, at this point in the, in the story, uh, we, we're basically focusing on building out a toolkit and resolving the pain point of what happens when I switch themes. So you own all your content. The plugin is independent of the theme, except the theme complements the plugin by styling it. So drawing a very strict line there, um, and then as we built out this toolkit, we started exploring end-to-end, -end, so a theme and, you know, the, the theme side of it, the plugin side of it, the e-commerce side of it, and just make sure that all the pieces stick well together, all the while listening to the customers, whether they're saying it or not, 
just trying to infer as much as possible from the feedback that we've been getting. And just around theming, so just to stick to themes, so pardon the pun on that, but really what it's about is aligning our products to complement one another. So things like Sensei, which is our e-learning plugin, trying to you know slot that into the whole scheme of things. Um, and ultimately, <clears throat> this all kind of tied back into WooCommerce, really. So WooCommerce became the, um, the umbrella product for everything that we're doing. And we had a lot of legacy to deal with. So we'd already taken care of making our themes sort of lean and mean, but we weren't necessarily building themes that were focused on what customers were wanting. And the large percentage of our customers are actually e-commerce customers, you know, store owners or store creators or store managers, essentially. So we ended up with Storefront, and Storefront is a recently released theme. We've had about 26,000 downloads or more from WordPress.org at the time. And it's a flexible free theme which offers deep integration with WooCommerce. Um, it's obviously it's a WooCommerce focused theme, but it's really lean and simple. Got a few color options that you can change. We've found a, a few design options so you can customize the typography, but it's between uh, several piece, several preset styles rather than being able to choose any typeface. Um, just to make it a bit easier for customers to actually get started with things. Um, you know, if, if I give you an option to choose between three or four different things that all look great um, versus, say, 500 different typefaces, some of which might look terrible, you know, something like Lobster, for example, is not the greatest typeface to use, especially if you're trying to sell medical equipment. So, you know, trying to give people a, a small niche set of options to get started really quickly. Um, the, the speed is, is also the big key there. So Storefront is, is an e-commerce focus theme. You can use it for anything. You know, I've built blogs using Storefront. Um, it's really simple to use. If WooCommerce isn't there, the theme still works. Uh, it just hides the card functionality, of course. And that's just sort of a way for us to showcase what we're trying to do within this toolkit. And by, you know, by moving features into plugins, we were trying to show that message as much as possible. But people don't often see the message you're trying to communicate until you actually just bite the bullet and do it. And this was our big move here. So Storefront is great. It's available for free on WordPress.org. Obviously, WordPress.org slash themes slash Storefront. About 26,000 downloads and just a really great response from everyone so far. And you know, it's on GitHub as well. So we've got an active development community. And we're just trying to push the boundaries with theming and just incorporate theming into our e-commerce toolkit, essentially. So as I mentioned earlier, we've got a series of other plugins like testimonials and features and projects and our team and, and all of these free plugins we've released. And how does that really tie into WooCommerce and e-commerce? So what we're really trying to do, as I mentioned earlier, is build a business building toolkit. So at the same time as we do that, we're trying to help people to understand how WordPress websites are actually built. So when you, when you were building a WordPress site, say, in 2007, you would start with something like Kubrick, your default theme. And if you needed a feature, you grab a plugin. Um, you know, premium theming wasn't really a thing back then. It was just kind of starting out. So people had that mentality of, I have my theme, and then if I need a feature, I will find a plugin that does it, um, or I'll try and build a plugin that does it, or whatever the case is. You don't necessarily build everything into the theming, but theming is an easy point of entry, so people go for that. Um, we're trying to get back to that mindset. You know, over time, people build everything into the theme. To this day, there are people who actually bundle plugins inside themes to make sure that they, they work. So, you know, if you look at a, a, any theme that bundles maybe a breadcrumbs plugin or something like that, what they're trying to do is build a theme that relies on a plugin, but they're doing it the incorrect way. So over the years, you know, that methodology of if I need a feature, I'll find a plugin and bolt it on, that as the ecosystem has grown, that mindset has changed a lot, and people have kind of been diluted by this thing of, I need a quick win, so I'll drop in a plugin into my theme, and it works. Um, and a large part of this is actually being down to the premium space, or the paid-for space, really. So people say, if I add a plugin into my product, um, I'm adding a feature which makes the product more valuable, and people will be more likely to buy it, or I can charge $10 more, or whatever the case is. So we're trying to just get right back to the core of what we're doing by building out a key toolkit of plugins that are all separate, yet all complement one another. So right now, as you can see, we've got the only one in this list on the slide that is not free is Sensei, and that's our e-learning tool. And the idea with Sensei is to, to share and sell knowledge, right? So which everyone has. So knowledge is, is, a, is something that we all possess. We can, everyone can teach somebody something. 
So that's kind of how that ties into to WooCommerce. Everything else in you know, the testimonials, our team features projects. Uh, subscribe and connect is another one. These are all tools that can help to enhance an existing website or store or blog. So that's kind of what we're trying to do there and it's an end-to-end -end solution. So if you're looking for testimonials, we've got a solution. If you're looking for team, we've got a solution. If we don't have what you're looking for, we're ready to hear about it. There's a key channel to, to talk about those kinds of things. The main idea being, if you need a feature, it's there for you. If you don't need it, it's not. we're not going to force it on you. <coughs> but what's next? So we've exploring we've been exploring this this idea of of SaaS and everyone thinks oh WooCommerce you know you you know you can you can host it you know you can do like a sort of a, a hosted e-commerce platform and charge people to set up a store and that's all well and good we've seen it done several times and each and every time it's it's somehow failed you know whether it's maybe maybe people need to target specific niches maybe it's just not a viable solution at this point maybe you know, other other e-commerce platforms that are already hosted are already taking care of this problem. So we're trying to use SaaS more as a how you say, like as as a, a, a means of delivery rather than as a solution to all problems. So SaaS is just a, is another way of of offering a particular service. And what we're hoping to do throughout this year is to try and explore what problems our customers are actually having and to try and solve them, if applicable, using some kind of a SaaS solution there. So you'll see there are, are offerings emerging already, such as Ordoro, which is a fulfillment service and inventory management, and that integrates seamlessly with WooCommerce using our API, which we built out during last year. And, you know, services like Printful as well, which do T-shirt and mug and, and uh, pillow and all these kinds of product fulfillment, um, they all use the API, and that was really our goal for the year was to build out a really solid end-to-end -end API and to integrate webhooks and to do the whole the whole toot basically um, everything together to make sure that WooCommerce can actually talk to the world um, it's it's all well and good having a plugin that works within WordPress and then any feature that you add you have to actually install into your website and I know I can tell you from uh, watching customers working with WordPress not just with with WooCommerce but actually just setting up a WordPress site, you know, someone who's not very technical, you know, we, we all say that it's possible to do that, but to set up a site without being technical. But at the end of the day, what you're also looking at is, the, you know, people don't often think about things like installing a plugin. You, go, oh, you know, you just search for it in WordPress.org, but what if you need to upload the plugin as well? Then there's things like directory permissions, and it becomes a very big pain point for people. So installing plugins is not as easy as it looks. Right, so trying to explore ways of solving that that problem, you know, you can you can solve setup is quite an easy problem to solve. Uh, installation is a little bit more of a difficult problem because if you want to try and solve installation, then you'd have to create some kind of a plugin to automatically install certain plugins with a one click, but then they have to install your plugin that you're creating. So trying to use SaaS to solve that problem is going to be our big challenge for the next year. And to do that, we're trying to expand our development team. So I've mentioned earlier that we're hiring. Um, you know, we're, we're looking to explore uh, expanding our team in large ways. So the development team in particular, but also other areas of, of the business, you know, marketing and, and business development and support. And what that all, the benefit of that really is for us to build key partnerships to solve key problems. So, you know, trying to explore different areas with people. So saying, let's say, uh, tax or email sending or shipping rates is, is are big problems for people. You know, trying to explore key partnerships with people to to solve those problems. And we don't have to be the the know alls of every area, but we need to know who to talk to in order to solve the problem. And like I've said there, teamwork makes the dream work. So that's teamwork within the team and teamwork within partnerships. And ultimately what it all boils down to, like I said earlier, is helping people to build businesses online, helping people to just be successful. So coming from coming from the, the mindset of democratized design all the way through to, to helping people to build businesses, it's really to be successful online. Things like that, this one, to, to be humans about it as well. So, you know, you'll contact us and you'll get a human response. Someone saying, you know, 
Hi, Jim. I'm so glad you're contacting us. Thank you. if you just stand by your goal and just be a human being about it. So between partners and customers and within a team, just being really human about it and, and just understanding what the goal is overriding. Um, just another example of this. So within our team, for example, I don't know how many people know this officially, but WooCommerce at the beginning, up until now, has been, or up until this year earlier, has been maintained officially by say two and a half people. Um, you know that's Mike, James, and then say half of another developer's time. At the time, it was Kuhn, and then you know we've we've expanded the team since. But at that time, so two and a half people were maintaining WooCommerce, and it's kicked up to over five and a half million downloads. So that's all down to you know the passion of the team as well as strengthening relationships between the team and key partners. You know, people who are contributing actively to WooCommerce in their own time. We have about over 280 active contributors on WooCommerce and GitHub. Um, it's really, uh, the relationships between us and these people are really strong. Um, you know, Claudio, who's joined us this year, was hired because we, we actually spotted him through GitHub, through his active contributions. He's had an insane commit streak on GitHub of over 500 commits. So that means basically he committed to an open source project every day straight for 500 days, which is just unbelievable. Um, and it really shows how strengthening relationships between people can really accelerate people's goals and dreams. And that's pretty much it from me. So I'm just going to swap over back to the video, and we can have a little chat. Just get back there. All right, so let me just take a quick look at the, at the question section here. I don't see any questions coming up. Just a minute. Let me just run through the chat. All righty, well, I'll stick around in the chat for a few minutes and, uh, and see if anyone has any questions. I'll take a few questions on air and then answer the rest of them in the in the in the crowdcast. That's what it's called. Yeah. Called it the cast thingy earlier, so crowdcast it is. Ah, okay, so Lisa's asking about the new EU VAT support. Um, <clears throat> okay, so I'll give a quick round up on that. So basically, the new laws coming into effect on the 1st of January is quite, a, quite an important one. So if you are selling uh, digital goods online or services or ebooks or anything like that, then what's happening is from the 1st of January, there's a, a new legislation or whatever you call it called VATMAS. So that means that instead of paying VAT in your current country that you're running your store from, you will be paying VAT to an EU customer so if, if I'm selling to someone in France, right, and then this comes into effect, if I'm selling to someone in America, it doesn't apply. But if I am selling an ebook to someone in France, then I have to pay VAT based on, you know, France's rates of and specific to ebooks. For example, they have something specific for ebooks as well. So that's caused a bit of a ruckus within the in the e-commerce community, and basically you then have to pay. You know, for that, and what what happens? You would pay to a MAS, which is a mini one-stop shop, which you set up through, you know, your through your uh, lawyers, and you pay that to you pay the appropriate amount of VAT to them, and then they will collect. Then the, the various countries will collect that uh, collect that payment from you, from your MAS, and that's kind of the the gist of it how it, how it operates it's a bit of a it's a bit of a mess for everyone because nobody really knows about it um, even though it's coming into effect in, in January 1st and what we've done within within obviously within WooCommerce we have to cater for ourselves as well as for our community because we're we're a platform so we've built out uh, updates to our EU VAT extension and we've released an extension for a service called Taximo which is a service to facilitate the calculation of these various taxes. Basically then you 
to do that, you would plug those in, and essentially what happens is you have to the cus the customer would have to verify or confirm the country that they're in, and there's sort of a two point verification. So we'd you'd need two pieces of evidence, so like an IP address and, uh, for example, a confirmation would be enough. Uh, so saying I live, you know, if my IP address is in France and then I say I'm in France, then I would check a checkbox that says I confirm that I'm really in France or I'm really a French resident, to, to be technical. And, uh, yeah, from there, that's just around the sort of legislation of it all. And then you would collect your, collect your uh, VAT and pay it to your mask. Um, so a bit of a mess, but that's the gist of it, really. Um, there's some great resources. I think her name is Rachel Baker, if I'm correct, has released some really good resources on it. Uh, we've recently published a blog post on WeThemes.com just announcing our move here with Taximo and the EU VAT extension. And there's some amazing resources out there. I mean, Taximo's support has got some great resources in their knowledge base as well. Um, it's definitely something worth looking at. Um, but it's, it only applies if you're selling digital goods or services online, something digital, and you're selling to EU customers. And that's pretty much it. Um, okay, so the questions here. So are you able to do other work, example design work, while working at Woo? Um, I assume you mean freelance work or side projects and things like that. And yes, that's actually a very interesting topic. So we've, we've had a side projects policy which we put in place. and. Essentially what it means is what we do is we say if someone is doing something within the WordPress space, um, you know, we'd like to know about it and see how we can get involved. But anything else is pretty much on the table. You know, and if we don't want to get involved, if it's a WordPress project, then you know, one's free to do what they want. Um, the, the main, yeah, I see someone's posted, Rachel Andrews, so that's exactly it. Um, so in terms of the side projects and things like that, obviously being a business building company, we've realized that having an entrepreneurial spirit is is crucial. So we're trying to encourage everyone in the team to actually start businesses and just to do stuff on the side. You know, we've got several guys in the company, you know, Bryce who's in the chat now, um, runs, uh, I think it's called With Love from Thai, and he basically sends Thai candy to people um, from Thailand on a subscription basis. And just, yeah, coming up with ideas and, and trying to do things. And we actually recently did a Ninjathon, which is like a hackathon. Uh, except not focused on code, it's focused on ideas. We did that at our uh, at our, lo our recent Woo trip. We spent a couple of days just sort of having people submitting ideas, got everyone to do a video pitch of what their idea is. Uh, lots of people explained their solution, but we were trying to get them to understand the problem that they were trying to solve, the idea that they had, uh, whether it's, you know, the, so we, we had ideas ranging from uh, setting up an e-commerce store is difficult for a first-timer to, uh, you know, donating to charity is important, or, you know, we had all these different, or showcasing WordPress sites is an important feature for our sales channel. We had all these different ideas, um, just trying to encourage people to explore what it is to understand an idea, validate the idea, talk to customers, and to build a business, basically, is what we're trying to do there. Um, so over time, that will grow, and yes, to answer the question in short, one is allowed to do side projects, and it's part of our DNA, basically, because that's what we do. Um, Ah, see, so Scotty wants to know about WooConf. Okay, so so WooConf was our first ever conference that we held. It's WooCommerce conference. We held that at uh, the Village Market, I believe it's called, the Village Ninety Nine Market or something, um, in San Francisco, and it was a really great two days. We had a full day of of talks. You know, we did uh, talks on everything from like development to host to marketing to analytics to anything commerce related. And it was really interesting. You know, we had a, a really engaged group of people, and everyone was quite, quite keen to be there. I think we had a, a good few hundred people. You know, people from within WordPress and people from you know outside of the WordPress community, and just to learn about e-commerce. And it was a really exciting couple of days. Um, second day was all workshops. We had a, well, sorry, a half day of workshops. So like a sales and store managers track upstairs, and then a developers track downstairs. Uh, we actually had some of our developers who work for us, you know, third-party developers, come in and speak to people about building e-commerce extensions for, for WooCommerce. And, and I did a, a session with Bob Dan, for example, who's a, a well-known WordPress trainer. To, we, we just spoke about setting up an online store and just key things to, to note when, when doing that for the first time. Things like taxes are difficult um, and shipping rates are incredibly difficult. 
So, you know, thing, things like that just to help people to, to grow. Um, all in all, it is a really great day and we're, we're looking forward to the next one. Um, okay, so what will WooCommerce be in two or three years? Well, I mean, I would, I would put that question right back to you because it's a community project. So we, we go by what customers are using and what store owners want. Um, for me, where I'd like to see us within WooCommerce is a really lean and mean WordPress e-commerce plugin, which is able to stand the test of time and actually just sort of bring WordPress e-commerce into the into the mainstream e-commerce space. So obviously not forgetting one's roots at the same time. So I mean at this point, we are the fastest growing e-commerce platform, powering about 18 percent, sorry, one eight percent of of all e-commerce sites online, according to BuiltWith, which is like a web scraping tool that tells you what technology different websites are using. And you know, like I mentioned, trying to build out various uh, SaaS offerings on top of WooCommerce just helps people to to grow what they do without taking on the heavy load of you know, if if for example, if we can solve problems like sending email, um, then someone who's maybe got a very small budget can start up a store on a shared host. Um, maybe they have a payment system that is outside of WooCommerce, so like a redirect to PayPal or something. Uh, so they don't need an SSL certificate. They can set up a store really quickly. They can then solve all those key problems that they're going to run into because nobody, you don't know the problem until you actually encounter it. So sending email on a shared host is a big problem. Um, people have this issue all the time, and we often recommend a service like Mandrel. So you know we can solve those kinds of key problems and and try and take uh, take all of that offline, uh, or oh, sorry, off the off their server for them, and and try and and just make setting up a store a heck of a lot easier. Um, you know, running a platform like WordPress to say you own your content, you know, we're not going to take that away from you. You can look at your code, you can see everything that's going on under the hood of your store, um, and you can own all your data, and you can say, I have a blog that runs a store next to it, or I have a store that has a blog. Uh, it's all in one place, it's easy to use, and it just, it just really works. Um, okay, so if tomorrow, say, WordPress went away, how would this change things for a company like Woo? So, realistically, WordPress will never die. It's so strong that, you know, even if WordPress was to go away, then somebody could fork WordPress and make a new, a new platform based on WordPress, which supports WordPress, and it, it can always grow. I mean, we're very heavily reliant on WordPress, of course, because it's our, it's our platform that we build on top of. Um, but at the same time, being a part of the community, you know, we we have several people on our team who recently contributed to WordPress 4.1, for example, and we're trying to really encourage more contributions there to keep the platform running. Um, with the growth that WordPress is having year on year, you know, it's growing by several percent per annum, so I don't think it's going to go anytime soon. But if that is the case, then obviously building out our various uh, SaaS offerings won't hurt. You know, it'll definitely help to secure us for that possibility, but um, realistically, I don't think that WordPress will die anytime soon. Um, and if it does, we'll be here to keep it going. Um, okay, so how can the next WordPress versions help WooCommerce? So, I mean, things like the API in WordPress is a big one for us. So we'll be, you know, shifting our WooCommerce API to integrate more with the WordPress API. Um, we've, we've seen quite a few different uh, areas that we've benefited from, you know, things like um, in the new admin design has helped us a lot. Um, you know, everything that happens within WordPress is is there to help WooCommerce as well. Um, things like the customizer. Uh, you know, growing the growing WordPress helps to grow WooCommerce. So basically, everything that that is happening within uh, WordPress is is there to benefit us as well. I'm very happy with that. Um, I think the question is more: How can WooCommerce help the next versions of WordPress? And I feel by doing active contributions in core and just helping uh, helping the community to thrive, uh, whether it's releasing themes or plugins or uh, contributions to core, I think that's how we can really help to grow WordPress. Okay, I'm, I'm not seeing any new questions coming in. Um, but in any case, 
thanks everyone for your, for your time. I'll uh, I'll stay in the chat for a little while and just answer a few questions there. But I think that's pretty much it.